Hey mamas, sleep is crucial for you, your partner, and your baby. And without adequate sleep, it's hard to be a physically, emotionally, and mentally present parent, spouse, employee, you name it. Lack of sleep can feed heavily into postpartum depression and parental burnout and can just make it hard to function with everyday activities. So I put out a poll asking about what you guys wanna know about sleep training and got so many questions back from mamas about how sleep training works. And so we're going to answer as many of them as I can in this video right now. I'm Bridget and I'm a birth doula in the San Francisco Bay Area and a mom of a toddler. And I love helping other moms navigate and find joy in all of the ups and downs of motherhood. So to keep finding encouragement and empowerment in your pregnancy, your birth, and your motherhood, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and have hit the little bell right next to it so you don't miss any of my future videos. So I know that sleep training is a topic that can be a bit polarizing because some people love it and some people hate it, but either way, I'm all about educating parents and supporting what is best for each individual family. I will say that I have never met a family who has sleep trained their children and regretted doing so, but I also know that the thought of sleep training can feel really overwhelming if you don't know where to start. So to help you start, I'm answering the top questions that mamas have asked me and offering some wise words from mamas who have walked this road before. Also, make sure you stay till the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing with you my absolute must-have, most favorite, wouldn't go anywhere without product to help babies sleep. So before we hop into questions, let me define what sleep training is. So sleep training is the process of teaching your baby how to independently sleep. For some babies, it's easier and others more tricky, but there are some key elements of sleep training that are going to help you get the results that you're looking for, and we're going to talk about them right now in our questions. Question number one that so many moms were asking is when is the best time to start sleep training? So formal sleep training usually is recommended to begin no earlier than four months. Usually around that four month mark, your baby has gained sufficient weight um, and is able to sleep for longer stretches at night and is able to self-soothe more easily. But before you decide to sleep train, you'll want to make sure that your baby is healthy and is in a good weight range. Otherwise, you might need to keep those night feeds for a little bit longer. The second part of that answer is to start sleep training when you are ready to do it. One mom's advice is to sleep train only when you're 100% ready because confidence is key. So if you're not feeling the need to change what you've already got going on, if that's feeding baby around the clock and not necessarily having them on a schedule, then don't change it. But if you're feeling like waking up through the night is making you exhausted and keeping you from being the mom that you want to be, then perhaps it's time to think about sleep training. Whatever decision you make, let it be from a place of confidence because being confident in your choice will help you be consistent as you sleep train your baby. The last thing that I wanna say about this question is that while you can start sleep training at four months, that doesn't mean that if you don't start by then, it's too late and you miss the boat and you can't ever do it. You can sleep train your baby at practically every age, but it does get a bit harder the older that they get. The next question is, how can I get my baby to sleep on their own? And the most basic answer for that is to make sure that they are falling asleep independently because the way that you're putting your baby to sleep is the same way you're going to need to resettle them when they wake up. So if you're rocking or nursing your baby to sleep, that's how they're going to expect to be put back down to sleep when they wake up in the middle of the night. Now, while they're still newborns, there are several ways that you can help your baby learn to sleep independently without making them cry it out, which is a method that I don't support when they are still so little. So one thing that you can do is just to lay them down in their own bed for some of their naps. If they wanna fall asleep on you, that's totally fine, but instead of holding them for the whole time during every single nap, just lay them down in their crib or their bassinet just so that they get a taste of what sleeping on their own is like. Letting them nap on you is not gonna ruin anything, so if you are craving those baby snuggles, snuggle your baby, mama. Or if you put them in the swing and they're dozing off or have already fallen asleep, try stopping the swing so they can start learning how to sleep without that constant movement. And when it's nighttime, try not to stimulate them too much. 
Let them know that it's sleep time by keeping it nice and dark and quiet even during those middle of the night diaper changes and feedings. So you'll just feed them, you'll change their diaper, and then put them back down. Then during the day, after they've eaten, you can play with them, interact with them, let them know daytime is for playing and nighttime is for sleep. Now, keep in mind that most newborns are going to have a wake time threshold of about 20 to 40 minutes before they're ready for another snooze. So during that wake time, you hold them, you do tummy time, you sing, and you just engage with your baby. So setting a very non-regimented but stable foundation while babies are little can really help them ease into that process of sleep training when they get older. Now, babies are often going to cry when you put them down. And when they're newborns, it's not the best idea to let them cry it out. It stresses baby out, it usually stresses the parents out too, and I truly feel that with a newborn, you can't spoil them enough or set bad habits. When they're so fresh and little, you just sort of need to cater to their needs at the beginning to show them that they are, in a, that they are safe in this new environment. However, as they reach that four month mark, a crying baby is totally okay. Like I said earlier, to get your baby to sleep on their own, they're going to need to fall asleep independently, which means you need to put them in, your, in their bed when they are awake. So when you first start off, you can help them get into that really like drowsy, half asleep state where their eyes are like barely open. They're almost rolling to the back of their head. And then before they've totally fallen asleep, you put them in their bed. So they're still awake, but they're just on the verge of falling asleep. And that usually makes it a lot easier for them to fall asleep. And then eventually what you're going to want to do is to be able to put them in their crib wide awake and have them be able to fall asleep all by themselves. Now, in the beginning, there are likely to be some tears, but that's okay. In fact, most pediatricians agree that letting your baby cry for like 30 minutes or even an hour is not going to hurt them. But as a mom who has sleep trained, I know the pain of hearing my baby cry. So there are ways to help you and your baby learn how to do this, but a little less painstakingly. Basically, what you do when you put them down and they start crying is leave the room and set the timer for five minutes. Then after those five minutes are up, if they aren't settling down, you go in, you pat their back, you give them their pacifier, you help them calm down down and then guess what you leave the room and then you set your timer for 10 minutes so during these 10 minutes that you're out of baby's room you're taking a shower you're washing the dishes you're doing something that's distracting you from baby's crying because I know how hard it is to just listen to baby's cry and then after those 10 minutes are up if baby's still not settled you go back in and you resettle them you help them calm down and then put them back in their crib or you just pat their back give them the pacifier and then you repeat that process and keep extending the time that you wait before going in to comfort your baby so doing this lets your baby know I love you, I'm making sure you're safe, you need to learn how to do this on your own, but I'm gonna hold your hand and help you while we learn together. Now there are other ways out there to get your baby to sleep independently without crying, but they usually take much longer and I personally don't have experience doing it, so I can't really give any information on that method. I can guarantee you though that your baby is not waking up in the morning mad at you for letting them cry as long as you are actively showing them how how much you love them throughout the day. So you show them how much you love them, of course, through, you know, talking to them, telling them I love you, giving them kisses, touching them, talking to them, singing, all of the ways that you can engage with your baby, show them, hey, I love you so much. And so you don't have to worry at night when they're crying because like I said, it is okay for babies to cry. So that is the most basic premise of sleep training is having your baby fall asleep independently. Now, some mamas ask if sleep training is necessary in order to get your baby sleeping better. And the answer to that is not necessarily. A little bit of wisdom from a mama in our community with grown up kids now is to just be flexible because life is in a straight path and you're going to get to your final destination. Mama, eventually your kid will sleep through the night, but it could take a while or it might not. If you're fine with waiting till your child is ready to sleep through the night on their own timeline, that is totally fine. If your system of parenting isn't broken, don't fix it. So I mentioned that four months is about the earliest that you want to start formal sleep training, and that's just a rough timeline, but what are things to consider when you're trying to find a specific time 
to sleep train your baby. So the first thing is to make sure that your baby is ready for it, especially that they're not sick or teething, because if that's the case, it'll probably be better to wait until baby is in better condition. And then the next thing I recommend is to find a week in your calendar that you can devote to a consistent schedule for your baby. So maybe a week where you know you're not going to have to be out late at night with your baby, and if you're trying to nap train them as well, a week where your days are fairly flexible and you can put them down for their naps in their bed. And then once you find a time that works for you and your family, it all comes down to consistency. Really quickly, I wanna mention that while you are sleep training, consistency is your best friend with helping your baby learn to get on a schedule and sleep independently. So for that week that you've chosen to sleep train, you might need to say, hey, I can't do lunch out with my friends because it's going to interfere with nap time. But once you have successfully sleep trained your baby, bumps in the schedule are going to happen where bedtimes are pushed later and nap times are skipped, and it's not going to completely throw everything out the window. The rule of thumb that I go by is try to make sure that that they aren't that babies aren't off their schedule for more than three days in a row. So maybe one night was a party that pushed bedtime till later, and the next day you had lunch out with the family and nap was on the go, or it was missed completely, and the next night was another night out. Then I would really try on that fourth day to have as consistent of a schedule as possible so that they're taking naps when they're supposed to be and they're going to bed when they're supposed to be. And that way, that idea of consistency and rhythm and routine sticks with them because usually three days of doing something is going to start to set habits for babies. Now I've been talking a lot about schedules, which is the second biggest thing when it comes to sleep training. So the first is helping them fall asleep on their own, and now it's about getting them on an age-appropriate schedule, and these two things really go hand in hand and really affect each other. So typically a basic format that a schedule has follows an eat, wake, sleep cycle. And each wake time is gonna be determined by the age of your baby. So for example, a five month old might wake up in the morning, have their feeding, and then be awake for like two hours before going down for another nap. Whereas a nine month old might wake up, eat, and be awake for three or four hours before taking a nap. And the reason why these wake windows vary is that at different ages, your baby is able to handle a different threshold of activity and wake time, and finding that sweet spot is going to help your baby sleep better. Also, knowing the amount of time your baby should be awake in the day is going to help you know what time you should be putting them to bed. And a good place to look to find out what your baby's wake window is for their age is babysleepscience.com, and I will link the website down below. Um, And I also recommend following Taking Care of Babies on Instagram, and I'll link her Instagram handle in the description below as well. So moving on to another question that I got from a mama that a lot of parents actually struggle with is why their baby wakes up soon after putting them down for bedtime or a nap. And the main reason for that is due to the wake windows that we just talked about. So typically a baby who wakes up soon after being put down is either over or under tired. So this is why understanding wake windows are so important and then creating that eat, wake, sleep cycle schedule to suit your baby is really going to help them sleep for those longer stretches. So to wrap up the basics of sleep training, the two most important things to help your baby get more sleep and you too are to help them one, learn how to fall asleep independently and two, build a schedule that provides the right amount of wake time to help them sleep better for naps and at nighttime. As I said, consistency is going to be your best friend as you sleep train your baby. So letting them know each night I'm gonna put you in your bed while you're awake, you're gonna fall asleep on your own. If you don't and you're crying, I'm gonna give you five minutes to resettle and then I'll come in and I'll help you relax or I'll give you 10 minutes or 15, 20, however long it is, but keep that consistent routine so that they know what to expect for those naps or those night times. And as you are very consistent, your baby's going to adjust to that consistency and learn how to sleep on their own. But while consistency is your best friend, remember to give yourself and your baby grace and room for mistakes because they're going to happen as both of you are trying to figure out how this whole thing works. 
One mama's advice is not to put so much pressure on yourself and your baby to sleep perfectly all the time because mama, they're just not going to do it. They're human. Even as adults, we have nights that are harder to sleep. So it's totally fine to experience days and nights where your baby needs you more than usual. I know I wasn't able to get to every single question that was sent to me, but I hope the answers that I gave you help you have a basic understanding of how sleep training works. If you have more questions, please ask them down below and I will do my best to answer them or point some expert sleep training mamas in your direction to help answer them. And last but not least, as I promised, my must-have favorite sleep training product is a white noise sound machine. For nine months, babies have spent time in your room that has never been silent, so silence doesn't actually suit infant sleep. Plus, in a very quiet environment, very little sound can seem like super loud and it can cause baby to unnecessarily wake up. So I highly recommend every parent to get a sound machine and my personal favorite one is the Hatch Baby Sound Machine because it has several white noise options for you. It has lullabies, it has a built-in nightlight, um, it has a time to rise option and my personal favorite is that it's able to be controlled from your phone so it makes it really convenient for you. Another sound machine option is the ROM and it's chargeable and portable um, and is a cheaper option over the Hatch Baby Sound Machine. It does doesn't have as many uh, like white noise options as the hatch um, and it's battery obviously like you have to charge it so you know that might be inconvenient for you guys but it's a really great option as well so I'm gonna link both of those options in the description below and I really think it's going to help make your sleep training journey a little bit easier so I hope answering those questions helped I hope you take me up on my advice to get a sound machine thanks for being with me in this video you guys and I will see you in the next one